everyone, welcome back to Art a la Carte. In this video, I want to show you how to draw this cute little husky puppy. So the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how I build up the shapes for this dog and then add in the details. And then later on, I'm going to talk to you guys um, and give you some tips on how to get better and how not to get so frustrated about learning. When I start to draw anything, whether it's a cat, dog, horse, dragon, person, Eiffel Tower, I break it down to some basic shapes, circles, squares, triangles, squiggly lines, ovals, whatever. It just makes it easier to draw. So for the puppy's main head, I'm using this nice circle and then a smaller circle for the puppy's muzzle, some rounded triangles for the puppy's ears. Now, unless you're wanting to draw this dog to look exactly like mine, you can move these things around to change the position of the head. For this drawing, I wanted the puppy to kind of have a three quarters look, so it's not looking straight at you, but it's not a profile either. And then I wanted its muzzle down just a little bit. Once you get everything placed in the direction that you want it to go, then we can begin to add in the details that it's going to make our puppy unique. The first thing I'm going to do is block out where I want the pattern for the fur. And with Huskies, their pattern can vary a little bit, so checking out some reference photos can give you some good ideas. One thing I love about Huskies fur patterns are their amazing little eyebrows. It makes them really expressive. So once I have that in, then I can begin to block in the facial features like the eyes and the nose. I had several different reference photos of Husky puppies sitting next to me while I was drawing to kind of help me determine exactly what I wanted my puppy to look like. So don't think that looking at reference photos is cheating. It's not. It can be hard to draw from life if you don't know what life looks like. So definitely use reference photos whenever you can. I decided I wanted to draw this puppy in a sitting position. I went ahead and blocked out the body using, again, my basic shapes, a circle for the chest area and another circle that's for the kind of tummy or rump area. You'll notice that I have the head is overlapping the chest circle and the chest circle is gonna overlap the body circle. So this is gonna help to connect my dog all together and also create a little bit of dimension. A lot of times you guys ask me, why do I draw with a colored pencil? First of all, the colored pencil I'm using is a Cool Erase colored pencil, and they come in loads of different colors. The reason I like to draw with them is, one, they don't smudge as much as a graphite pencil, and they add a little bit of a variance in my picture. If I'm working on a piece that I want to maybe change a little bit, I might make the initial sketch in one color, and then go back in and refine it with a different color. That way my lines don't get all jumbled up. But if you only have a regular drawing pencil, you can use that. The one thing I will tell you is to draw lightly. Using light pressure allows you to erase your lines really easily, which is important if you want to change your drawing around a little bit. With this puppy, at first I was drawing his legs close together, but as the drawing progressed, I realized I didn't want his front paws touching. I wanted them spread out a little bit more to kind of give him a playful appearance. So I was able to erase the original front paws and draw in the other paws. Had I pushed a lot harder on the paper, it would have left in ground in lines and you would have seen kind of this ghosting image of what the puppy's paws had originally been. So practice using that really light pressure. If you'd like more information on how I put color into this drawing, I have loads of coloring videos out there and I'll put some playlists at the end of this video for you to check out. But right now I want to talk to you guys about something I see in the comments a lot, especially in my tutorial videos. And that's, I tried this, but it didn't work for me. Epic fail. I'm so sad. Tears. I give up on drawing. Things like that. I just want to encourage those of you who maybe are a little discouraged at your drawing level, or maybe you're giving this a try for the first time and it doesn't turn out. Maybe it doesn't even turn out anything near like this. Maybe you're trying to draw a puppy and it turns out more like a hippopotamus. Let me just say this. This is not the first dog I have drawn. This is not the tenth dog I've drawn. This is not even the hundredth dog I've drawn. I would say, and this is really probably underestimating, I would say I've drawn over 500 dogs. And the reason I say 500 dogs is because I don't draw dogs a lot. If you were to ask me how many times I've drawn horses or people, that number would be way larger. So when you're doing this, if this is the first time you've drawn this type of dog, or even if this is the hundredth time that you've tried to draw a dog and it's not looking like this, this is a learning process. It's not, a drawing tutorial is not meant for you to look at it and be able to draw something perfectly the first time. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes I get a drawing tutorial and people just pick up on it and, it's, and they can just do it right away. But that's an exception to 
the normal learning process in art. Art takes a lot of time and effort and work. If you're having trouble with this tutorial, let me just suggest first watch it once without trying to draw along so you can see all the steps without having to try to see what you're drawing. Then go back and draw along with this video and then just practice it out. Draw tons of dogs on a piece of paper. Don't try to make your masterpiece. Just draw the head 10, 15, 20 times and then draw the head with the body and then draw the head and the body 20 more times after that and then begin adding in the color after that. And I would love to see your guys' progress with these drawings, whether it's this tutorial or any of the other tutorials that I have. Make sure to tag me in your Instagram photos, or you can even email them to me. I have all that information in the description box below. If you're brand new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Again, if you'd like to watch some of my other videos, here's a few videos that I recommend to you guys. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye!